High 97 TV, high97.com, crowd move out books. And today we're going somewhere else with it. We're going to keep it a little bit hip hop, but we're also entering into politics. And my friend here, Adolfo Carillon, is Thank you, today. my brother. Good to and see I you. I want to welcome you to High 97. We usually don't do this. You know, we usually have to wear baggy clothes and a couple of chains in order. Uh, I didn't come with that <laughs> get up today, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, welcome to the show. So I, I know I know one of your many issues and why you're running for mayor is also education. What, what, what do we need to fix about education? In the Look, city? you know what? We're failing the kids of the city. Only 29% of the kids are graduating from high school, ready to go to work or ready to go to college. That is a national shame. That is an embarrassment for yeah. a city like New York. And it is very dangerous for our future. We're trying to grow a global economy, a tech economy. We, we, we need to invest in broadband to grow this global economy. But the the kids that are coming out of the school system are not ready to work in that economy. So what we have to do is make sure that we transform, not reform, mm -hmm. but transform Just the schools. So what we need to do is create world-class schools in every single neighborhood. And you know, it sounds fancy, world-class schools. What it simply means is that the kids that come out of these schools should be able to compete in the IT jobs of the new global economy. And those are high paying jobs. And if we want to create success in our communities, if we want to create success in the Bronx and Bed-Stuy and uh, Washington Heights and Harlem and so many other neighborhoods, we're going to have to prepare those kids to compete. And then uh, obviously we want them to go to college and we want them back and obviously we want them to work back in our cities, but without that debt in their head from all the student loans and et cetera. So we gotta fix that also. It, you know, we have a lot to fix in the city. Um, we need a mayor that understands that reality. I grew up in the projects. You know, I went from South 2nd Street in Williamsburg to uh, the Lower East Side mm -hmm. to, to Alphabet City. I know, LES. <laughs> um, uh, and, and then in 1969, we moved to the Bronx. But that's the story. And look, in, in less than one generation, we went from poverty to the middle class. My parents came from Puerto Rico in the 1950s. And here, here I am today, right? Running for mayor, whoever would have thought? I I'm never not thought. Even you. I never thought I would do. It. No, but it's good because you're someone who actually moved around the city, and on top of that, you're a product of the public school system. So, why not believe the person who actually been through it? Let me tell you, it can work. It can work. But we have to get the special interests and the people who are in the way out of the way. Right. The adults have to understand that our job collectively, whether you're a teacher, a principal, um, an administrator, the union, uh, the mayor, the city council, all of us together, the parents, we all have to be in this together about the kids and only about the At kids. At the end of the day, the goal is to make things better for the kids. Absolutely. So I know you're from the Bronx, obviously, home of hip hop. I know you had to have at least one or two favorite songs or artists or something like that. You know what? Um, if I if I choose one, <laughs> you may never see me again. <laughs> They're all my friends, but you know we 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 we're the home, we're the birthplace. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Cedar Playground, yeah. Sedgwick yeah. Avenue, the Queen. Uh, you know, Queens and New Rochelle tried to mm -hmm. steal our thunder, yeah, but, it's not but they don't have yeah, it's you know the they don't have Curtis Blow, no. they don't have the Furious Five, they don't have Africa Bombada. And Those are people that we honored you know when I was borough president recognizing how important this genre in American music is exactly. and, and just like rock and roll and everything before that it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good reason and a good thing to recognize that hip-hop is part of everyday life you know what it is just like other uh, genres of American music it is an expression of a generation in this case it's the urban reality it's the voice of people and you know every generation has their moment where they just speak up mm -hmm. and they say hey hold on a second I don't like the way the world is I think we should change it or here's my assessment and it could be pretty nasty yeah. sometimes I don't care how you hard. take it but I'm right. going to tell, tell you how, how you know how, I'm going to talk to you straight and and I believe that look the fact that this thing went global, mm -hmm. you know, I often joke with my staff about make it go viral, make it go viral, <laughs> but it did go viral. Yeah. This thing uh, went around the world. I was in, in uh, Beijing oh, okay. and there were kids in the street yeah. break dancing, rapping yeah. and all. I, it's you a know. is like something out of, like oh. I always tell people outside of the United States, it's a class. It's a course. People actually study hip hop. They take classes. Like you go to school yes. and study hip hop. They analyze the lyrics. They analyze the moves. They analyze the background, the yeah. neighborhoods. You know, it is it is a, an art form that I think is a real expression of a people wanting to, a generation wanting to say something about yep. their place in the world. Exactly. And then going back to growing up in the Bronx and as a kid or what have you, I know like when I grew up, I could go outside every day and play in the streets. I could go outside and ride my bike. 
Did, do we do we need that back? And, and obviously, what was like your favorite uh, game as a kid to play in the street? Oh man, well, I, you know, my mother used to come chase me from the basketball court after dark oh, because play I play ball. We yeah, might have, we might have to. We might have to. We might have to make that happen. All right, we we'll see if you got a jump shot. <laughs> oh, you know, he's already talking. Yeah, we're talking. You know, I know how to talk trash too. So <laughs> oh, I'm good at talking trash. That's, That's part of growing job. up in the city, man. <laughs> but but I played a lot of basketball. Um, I did a lot of bike riding. And then, you know, uh, we took advantage of the fact that w Wallman Rink in Central Park was uh, was practically free. And I had hockey skates, and I got thrown out of Wallman Rink too many times. <laughs> For being because, a good kid, I bet Yeah, you. <laughs> I was a great kid. But, you know, they used to tell you don't speed, but then you would no, speed. You catch a little they try to catch you, yeah. You have it. <laughs> so, um... We also have a, a, a Spanish-speaking audience, and I, I open up the floor for you right now. You want to say something to them? Bueno, a mi familia latinoamericana, nosotros somos la nueva mayoría. Está, estamos aquí en Hot 97. La fuerza del futuro de Nueva York está con los latinos y con el Bugs. <laughs> yeah, that was a Spanish shout-out if you didn't get it. <laughs> But, um, and then, and then I, I guess we close it out, and I know you said it, uh, our children and, and also uh, housing and et cetera. So, in all, once you become the mayor, like, from there on, what is the first thing you're trying to do as mayor? First day in office. First day in office, we declare a housing emergency because we have a 2% vacancy rate. People can't afford to live in this city. And we uh, lay out a plan to build uh, housing for, uh, for families in New York City, for all New Yorkers. And the second thing I will do on day one is we will start a 100-day program to transform the public schools. And it's going to be a full court press. And anybody who gets in the way will be steamrolled because it's about our kids. It's about the future. We have to stop being worried about offending people um, when we're trying to fix things like education and build a future. That's why I'm running as an independent. And I know that the young people in our city, they're independent. Mm -hmm. They don't like to be pegged. They don't want yeah. to be called a Republican yeah. or a Democrat yeah. or this or that. You know, know what they, they want to be respected and and they're worried about are you going to do for me something that's positive here's what i say to them we got to do this together exactly the the city hall will be open up opened up to you it's your city make it your city right. it's your city and they can do it on november 5th exactly. on election day november, november 5th, 5th. And november and you 5th just said election day we have a horrible issue with that when it comes to like a, a city election a local election no one really cares about it no one votes you not you're not going to believe this but Only 29% of the people in New York City that are registered to vote came out to vote in, tw in 2009. So we have 4 million voters, 1.2 million came out to vote. That's ridiculous. That means 7 out of 10 people stayed home. They're boycotting the process. They don't yeah. believe in it. And you know what? In a funny way, we can't blame them because look look what the process has produced. It hasn't yeah. produced much. We need an independent there to say, we're going to take all of this on. I'm going to offend a lot of people in the process, okay. but we're going to get it done. I'm so sorry. People got, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Don't ask for, for permission. Ask for forgiveness. And, and at, you know, at the end of the day, we got we to gotta own this thing. We got to come out and vote. And our people, look, Latinos and African Americans, forget about it. We're, we're worse than the rest. Mm -hmm. We're at 15, 16% of, of our, uh, 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 you know, the, the, the registered voters. Exactly. We have to. We, we represent the new majority. Of course. It's time to take it. Let's own it. Let's, let's begin to build a better New York. Perfect. And me, I just want to say thank you for your time. Thank and, you, brother. And I appreciate you. And once again, let the social media world know how they can follow you on Twitter. Well, on Twitter, it's at Adolfo Carrion, A-D-O-L-F-O-C-A-R-R-I-O-N, at Adolfo Carrion. So before you get out of here, I got to hook you up with something. Mercy, can you pass it to me? All right. You, know you can't leave Hot 97 without a little swag. Oh. So oh. might as well hook you up. I got my Hot 97 swag. See that? Yeah, he put it on right away. There you go. That's what He I'm talking about. Quick. You got to leave real with quick. these hats, I he understand. He leaves right? so far. <laughs> hey, man, once again, I wish you nothing but luck. And, and, and you, go brother. out there and make it happen for you and, of course, for the city. And, and thank you for being with us today. Thank you for this opportunity. Cool, man. Once Take again, care. we're here. Hot 97 TV, of course. Crowd move out bugs. And uh, Hot97.com. You know you got it here all the time. Peace, y'all.